What's going on everybody? Today we are back with another episode of Toon Trends. As usual, I am Ace the Outsider. And I apologize for being absent. I got sick because the government tried to kill me with a flu shot. And it took about two or three weeks to get over from me fully because I, I didn't sound good, I didn't smell good, I didn't look good. So I had to sharpen it back up. So I'm back to optimal performance for this week's show. So last time I did Captain Planet and it is so ironic that the, the week that I was working on it, they announced the Captain Planet remake. Like, what are the odds of that's exactly what the show is about? It's like rebooting and renewing all these cartoons that like deserve a second life. So I'm just keep on doing what I do and hopefully it works with this cartoon that I'm up to next. So this week I got Mummy's alive. As you can tell from my shirt and my necklace, you probably already know what my decision is going to be on this one. But I'm going to do the show anyway, just to break it down and just remind you guys how good of a show this was. I'm going to get woke, y'all. Now, if you can't tell by the theme song, this show is about a kid named Presley who lives in San Francisco. His dad is an archaeologist and his mother works in a museum. So upon wandering through a new mummy exhibit, He's attacked by a sorcerer from ancient Egyptian times by the name of Scarab, who thinks he's an Egyptian prince. Luckily, he's saved by four mummies who are awakened in the process. Now, these aren't just your normal mummies walking around talking about, oh, curse, curse. No, these mummies are just badass characters. They have a power that gives them magical armor. So after a very bright and flashy transformation sequence that they do every single episode, they're able to fight off Scarab and save Presley. Is mine. Not while we are here. After being saved by the mummies, Presley finds out that not only is he a descendant of Egyptian royalty, he's also the reincarnation of a prince by the name of Rhapsody, who lived almost 3,500 years ago. Being that he is a reincarnation, Presley also retains some of the memories that the prince had. The mummified remains of a cat. Believed to be Prince Rapti's pet. Poor little guy. Hey, I don't even like cats. Why am I upset? So the basic cycle of the show is Scarab uses all these ancient deities to capture Presley and use his soul to become the king of all of Egypt and take over the world as being actual royalty is the source of his power. So it's up to the mummies to protect Presley and protect the world. Now, let's run over the characters. First we have Jakal, leader of the mummies and the closest protector to Prince Rapsi. Jakal's armor is based on that of an eagle or a hawk, which Egyptians use often to symbolize a higher standing. He has a firm and focused attitude and really has a great sense of duty when it comes to protecting the prince. He also stands as a good father figure to Presley because his dad is overseas in Egypt and he also happens to be a jewel thief. So as a pseudo father figure for Presley, he also gives him a bunch of proverbs and lessons to keep his mind sharp. You are wise, young prince. Even the desert lion retreats when the pack of hunting dogs is too large. Next we have Wrath, who is a mechanic and also a very good magician. Wrath is just about as strict, if not more, than Jakal. In the ancient times, he acted as the prince's tutor, guiding him in ways of writing and also wisdom. Wrath also makes a very handy swordsman. But only I could combine the crude mechanics of your world with the wisdom of Egypt. Set free the power of Ra! Um, it needs a little refinement. No kidding. Then you have Armand, because every show needs a stocky guy who's always hungry. Armand is physically one of the strongest guardians, even though he only has one arm. Get it? Armand, his arm is off. But luckily, when he gets his armor, it grows right back. He's symbolized by a ram, which pretty much symbolizes what he is. In ancient times, he taught the prince the ways of combat, showing him an ancient martial arts style known as Egypt suit. Now, I don't think Egypt suit is actually a form of martial art. However, Egyptians were one of the first civilizations to use martial arts as a way of training and combat in a grand scale. 
Kindly exit through the rear of the vehicle. Certainly not least, we have Nefertina. I am Jakal, this is Arman and Raph. And he is Nefer. You mean she? No, no, <laughs> no, no just a boy. How point. would you know? No, no. A actually, the prince is right. I am Nefertina. I only pretended to be a man, since women are not allowed to drive the chariots of the pharaoh. No wonder he never went swimming in the Nile with us. Nefertina's armor is symbolized by the cat, who was seen as a local protector to ancient Egyptians. She's one of the more carefree adventurous mummies, because she's always had the odds against her, so she's not afraid to take an extra step and go all out. So she does things like joyriding chariots, or cars, or planes, or whatever she can get her hands on. <laughs> Now that you've finished improving the hot raw, maybe I can take it for a ride. I've been itching to try it out. But maybe it's the bandages. Well, all right. Now while the mummy's armor gives them enhanced abilities, that enhancement is only temporary, as mummies do need to recharge by sleeping in their sarcophagi. However, when they wake up, it is time to kick some tut. Okay, you know what, let's be honest. I, I'm gonna get this out right now. I do not support that term. Since King Tut was kind of royalty and a god, saying you're going to kick Tut is like saying you're going to kick Jesus. Let's kick Tut! Let's kick Tut! So that's pretty much the basis of the show. Uh, it ran for almost about 40 some odd episodes, so I think it was a really good show. Just like, look at this, this, this fight scene. The fight scenes were choreographed so very well, even for a cartoon. I think that the creators had a good idea of how to use the mummy's armor to incorporate into their fighting abilities. So, of course, like I said already, as you can tell by my necklace and my shirt, <laughs> I think this show deserves a reboot! Yes, of course, why, why wouldn't I want this show to get rebooted? It's one of the few cartoons that actually touched on Egyptian mythology without kind of whitewashing it. But before I get into the details of that, let me just tell you about how great this show in particular was. One of the things I liked a lot about it was their vehicles. So Raph is just such an incredible genius that he's able to make these seemingly overnight. He had a sarcophagus shaped car that was damn near an Egyptian version of the Batmobile. He also had a speedboat and a plane. Yo, come on, like, <laughs> this is the design of them alone. It's just badass. Can you imagine, like, a gold plated Batmobile just, like, riding down the street? Son, you can't go wrong with them. Also, I enjoyed the transformation sequences. Now, while they did this literally every single episode, I mean, I did not get tired of it just because it was so cool. It kind of resonated with uh, anime a little bit, you know, because transformation sequences like Sailor Moon and things like that, where the background changes and it's just this whole sequence of like, you know, flashing lights, and beams, and all this type of stuff. I think that was really cool to incorporate into the show. Also, the character designs are just so A1. It's like the armor kind of represented a sarcophagus and the banding was just, it just looked real nice. I like the way that they incorporated animal characteristics into the armor. That was a plus for me. If the show was to be rebooted, I'm kind of torn on the tone of it because it can really appeal to little kids and kind of teach them about Egyptian mythology as opposed to like, you know, Greek mythology, Roman mythology, uh, Japanese or Asian mythology. African mythology as a whole is kind of missing in kids' programming. But while you can make the show geared towards kids, you can also gear it towards young adults. Only because you can make it a more mature tone. Things that kind of touch on Nefertina not being able to join the army uh, is an example of sexism. And Jakal is also missing his family because they were also they were kidnapped. And there's just a plethora of Egyptian mythology elements that you can incorporate. They had plenty of different guys and deities that they, you know, worshipped and represented in their art. So really, the possibilities are endless when it comes to that. Now, as I mentioned before, one of the things I'm most concerned about if they were to reboot or rewind the show is staying true to keeping it Egyptian. Not a westernized, watered-down, whitewashed version of it. Because honestly, I'm sick of seeing that in media. Not to say that they really got in-depth with how Egyptian society worked, but it was a good depiction of it. One that wasn't offensive, at least. There are plenty of resources that have taken 
Egyptian mythology and try to make it more white. I mean, I'm just gonna be honest with you. That's kind of what happens. If you don't believe me, just take a look at this book that I got when I was like seven. Just, just look at this. That, that is not an African person. It's not. It's not. Like these people do not look like they work in a damn sun all day long. They've even done it to their own European culture. The story of Othello, which was written by Shakespeare in the movie in I think 1960s, they had Othello, who was supposed to be an African black man, played by a white actor. Come on. <laughs> it's it's kind of amusing, but at the same time it's sad because this is their way of making reinforcing the fact that white people belong in everybody else's culture. They don't. Because representation matters so much and that's really something that we need to keep in mind that's something that hollywood needs to keep in mind even though they keep on doing it on purpose because they don't really care so that's the show for today guys i apologize if i seem kind of jittery i just had a coffee so if you guys have any comments questions concerns anything like that just put them on down in the bottom uh you guys can submit some more fan art that would be great so until next time thank you for watching toon trends